to finding the chapel this Sunday, everyone. Today we will be celebrating the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Um, just a quick plug, if anyone is interested in volunteering, we always need more volunteers. So please meet T. Myself or Sean, the guy in the white Hawaiian shirt after Mass, and we'll get you added to our email list if you're new. And please, if you're not new or whatever, looking to help volunteer, we need help in all capacities, so just let us know. Um, after Mass, we'll all meet in the um, Annex for some refreshments, so see you after Mass. Everyone, please rise to greet our celebrant, Father John. To you, I, <clears throat> to you I call. You will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye. In the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We'll now say the glory together. If you open up the Breaking Bed 2021 book on the inside uh, cover sheet, you'll see the Gloria on the left hand side. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. 
responsorial psalm, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one on your right and the other on your left. Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord's Gospel is to the Lord. Well, James and John, apostles of Jesus, as apostles, as students of any rabbi, they were called to imitate the master. 
And did they not and did they not see Jesus going around doing things for others and not for himself? Were they not witnesses to Jesus' constantly pouring out his life in service to others? And yet, what is their request? Do whatever we ask of you. They just kept missing it. James and John want glory. And our Lord wants to show them the path to glory. But it is a path that they will not expect that would lead to it. Suffering for the sake of others. Our true glory comes from the degree to which we give ourselves to others, just like our Lord. James and John are seeking glory, and Jesus is offering them glory. But they don't entirely understand the path to it or the kind of glory to be won. And that is because they have a different standard of greatness. Jesus has made clear to us the different standards of greatness. There is the standard of greatness in Jesus' kingdom and a standard of greatness in the kingdoms of the world. In the kingdoms of the world, the standard of greatness is power. The test is this. How many people does a person control? How great of an army of servants do they have at their beck and call? What resources can I hoard and can I bring under my control? Or how many people can I impose my will? In the kingdom of Jesus, the standard is that of service. Greatness consists not in reducing other people to one's own service, but reducing oneself to their service. The test is not, what service can I extract? What things can I control? How can I impose my will? But what service can I give? If you seek true greatness, heavenly greatness, then you must seek to put yourself at the service of others. And so Jesus draws them in with some questions. Our Lord works with them. He doesn't simply tell them that they are being ambitious and should focus on other things. He's actually very gentle with them. And he tries to push that impulse to a place that will truly make them great, that will truly fulfill them. We can contemplate earthly glories, but they pale in comparison to what awaits for us in eternity. And James and John think they know exactly what they want, but it is a vision tainted by their ignorance and by visions of earthly glory. And yet, they are eager. When our Lord asks them if they are prepared to do what it takes to achieve glory, they speak of a cup to drink and of a baptism to receive. Both refer to his passion. He will lay down his life for others. Jesus is first telling them, and then they will soon see what it means to be great in his kingdom. If you and I want to be great and glorified, we must follow Jesus. Persevere in the faith and lay down your life for others. Not only will it make you great, but it will also make you beloved by those you serve and those who look back on your life. True greatness Heavenly greatness is enduring. But don't we already understand this in some way? When you think of people in your lives, people that you truly love, those who were able to win you over or win over your heart, did they win it because they controlled everything? Because the vastness of the resources and their wealth and their power that they controlled? Or did they win your heart by the love that they showed you? by building you up, by the service they provided you, by the patience and kindness they offered you, or by taking your hand and walking with you wherever life was leading you then. These actions win a person's heart and make them great, make them beloved. These actions also are a reflection of the divine nature that is God. And, when, and what we see in these actions is the reflection of God. We see the goodness in it. 
We see clearly God's work in it, and we know inherently that that is the path to greatness built into us and written in our hearts by God. This is putting others before ourselves. Indeed, it is so central to Christianity that during the Last Supper, Jesus himself declared it as the identifying mark of his followers. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And that is the truth. When we put others first, we draw closer to Christ, who alone can give us the meaning we yearn for. Now, most of us are not going to be called to witness this so dramatically as Jesus did. But we will be called to live our lives just as heroically. James and John were bold in seeking glory, and we have an advantage over them. We have seen the path to glory that our Lord has traced out for us. Let us seek the glory that not only benefits us, but others as well. A glory only won through suffering and trials for the sake of others and the imitation of Christ. Let us stand now and profess our faith. Again, if you turn to the Breaking Bread book in the opening cover page, you'll see the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers and petitions before our Heavenly Father. We're all called to, to the consecrated life of the church service, that they bear witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public servants, that they exercise their authority for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have completed careers of service to humanity, that they enjoy long and fruitful retirement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, especially those suffering from division, that they form mutual support above petty quarrels. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are gathered at this table, that their lives of ser service bring closer the reign of love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, graciously hear the prayers of this, your family, and answer them all according to your merciful will. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen.
blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. But through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Himself to share in the humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. For the meek's body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be the sign for eternal life.
the Son of Man has come to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from the participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just a few announcements. Well, first, let me say, it's so good to see so many of you here. You have no idea how happy this really makes me. It's, I'm sure, I don't know. I mean, I used to be a lay person, too, when I was younger. I didn't always like going to Mass, but... Uh, so I don't know if you feel the same, but I love seeing you all guys here. This honestly is the highlight of my, uh, of my week easily, so please come back. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, next week, the bishop, one of the bishops is coming. I don't know if he's saying mass, but I'm just going to put that out there. So if you'd like to meet one of the bishops, I, I assume he is, but he hasn't told me anything. So I guess be prepared for that. I I've never met him myself, so be nice to him. I'm just kidding. I'm sure you guys will be nice to him anyways. Um, additionally, just announcements. Uh, again, we do have daily mass and confession if you would like to come. I'm trying to make that uh, as available as possible, uh, especially confession. Uh, just kind of put this idea in your head. You know, my last parish, we had a parish of 3,000 families. I can guarantee, the, the irony to me is I'm offering confession more here right now for you guys than our pastor did with the 3,000 families. So I'm hope, take advantage of it. So it's Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday. That's during the day. That's 11 uh, a.m. for confession, 1130 mass. Tuesday, Thursday, 1700 for confession, 1730 mass. And I didn't mention this before. So if for some reason you can't make it to confession at those times and you would like to make an appointment, that's not unusual. Don't feel like, you know, don't, I hope you don't feel weird about it. Yeah, make an appointment uh, for confession because it might also give me uh, kind of some insight. I set those times up hoping that it would be able to accommodate you, but if I'm getting a bunch of you know, requests for confession at some other time, it's going to let me know that, okay, I need to change something about this schedule so it's more conducive and for a benefit for you. So, um, so if, even if it makes you uncomfortable to come to confession, I mean, no one feels comfortable coming. I love going to confession, but most people don't like going to confession, but uh, you would be doing me and others a favor uh, if you did that, because I really am trying to make this uh, as uh, beneficial to you as possible. And I have no problem, honestly, changing even those mass schedules and the times in confession. I just don't know when and where, right? Or I just don't know the time. So, um, Also, is anyone new here? Oh, good. Crystal over here, you want to raise your hand? Right there. Go to her, sign up, at least so we can get you on our email list. That way, you know, if there's changes in schedule or anything like that, uh, we can kind of update you on those things. And uh, anyone leaving soon? I know you're leaving soon. Crystal's leaving soon. Ah, oh, okay. Well, we'll give a special blessing for you. Maybe, the, maybe we'll get the bishop to say a special blessing for you. I'll make the request. We'll see what he does. Anyways, do we have any other announcements? Come and join us for fellowship after. Listen, you guys don't have any place to be right now. You can't tell me you're waiting to get to the game because, you know, we're seven hours ahead, so I don't want to hear it. So I'm just kidding. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace.